uh, he's fine, so gentlemen. Okay, yeah. you want to introduce yourself, or you want uh, me to introduce? Yeah, sure, I can do it myself. Okay. Uh, his intro uh, will be better. Hi, everyone. Uh, I assume uh, since this uh, this is a JS uh, plus CSS uh, meetup, a lot of you are web developers, correct? Okay. Yeah. So uh, my name is Lin. Uh, I'm a software engineer at uh, Singapore, uh, uh, Facebook Singapore. Um, I work on internal tools, nothing fancy. Um, so yeah, this is my self introduction. Uh, at work, I use the Flow, React, Relay, plus CSS modules at work. You know, all of those things were kind of created by Facebook and open sourced. Um, but uh, during my uh, personal hours, uh, I use TypeScript plus uh, React again and Apollo for to replace Relay. That's a GraphQL client, and also. Uh, JSS to style my components at home. You are going to learn what JSS is. Um, and I like inline styling. Uh, so I find this is a really fitting topic since we have both groups here. Um, so uh, do I need to talk this again? I think yes. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you why. So th there was this uh, ancient talk in uh, 2014 by a Facebook engineer about problem with CSS. Um, those are true. Uh, some of them have been fixed by CSS modules, some of them are not, uh, and we have a lot of solutions right now, both on the CS in the CSS world, like uh, just now uh, the gentleman talked about, and also we have uh, JS solutions. Um, so, you know, Facebook actually, uh, actually recommend you to use inline style for React. Um, surprising it is, but uh, it is true, and we actually do things like this. Can you tell me what this button is? <laughs> uh, Probably not, right? So this is a primary button. It's a blue color button because of the background color here. I was hoping that someone could tell this is blue. Uh, my previous manager could tell any color from the RGB values. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so these are this single element shows all the problems with the uh, inline styling if you use the uh, native React uh, inline styling uh, solution. Uh, solution. Uh, so it's messy, and it, if you want to customize this kind of stuff, so you have to either uh, provide custom, uh, props uh, to expose props in indi for individual uh, attribute, or you open up the whole style uh, to be merged together with your own uh, implementation. Um, yeah, that's a pain, right? Uh, you want to control how other people use your components if you are in a large team. So classes, CSS class is still loved. Um, we have this thing called uh, uh, style components, and it's a kind of uh, inline styling supercharged. You write your components using the uh, ES6 uh, the, the template. Uh, these are kind of strings, but they are converted to some function calls uh, using this special syntax, and it's converted to your. Uh, if you notice here, these are classes that are generated from uh, your attributes here. Uh, Looks ugly, doesn't it? Right. Uh, it's it's not JavaScript and it's not HTML. It's a new thing, and you want to like inject it into your JavaScript, uh, which uh, a lot of people hate. Right. Here comes JSS. Although uh, this talk is about React style, in inline styling, JSS is not specific to React. Um, but I'm just going to do the demo using uh, React. This is a setup you need to do. It's actually pretty much all the setup you need for your normal uh, needs. Just call setup with the preset. So the preset is a set of plugins that uh, is most commonly used. And uh, write your inline styles. This looks almost the same as the normal inline styles. It's an object. It can be nested. And uh, you can specify numbers using numbers, surprising. Uh, and you can also specify strings as JavaScript strings. Everyone loves that. Um, looks surprisingly familiar, right? Because it's JavaScript. And you use that, those classes that are generated by JSS by inserting those classes uh, into your HTML. Uh, don't do that. Uh, but this is just for uh, demonstration purposes. Uh, OK, so what does that piece of object generate. It's actually this thing. It inserts inline classes into your HTML document as your page renders. Uh, usually we use this for single page applications. So as 
as the user interacts with your page, the style changes. This also works for uh, server rendered uh, pages. Uh, and the amazing part is that JavaScript is a general purpose uh, programming language. That means you can do a lot of amazing stuff. Someone actually created some plugin that uh, generates atomic CSS. It, I'm not sure if you know what that is. Actually, it minimizes the number of classes that is generated into your inline documents to minimize the size of your page. And it's actually pretty awesome. Um, all right. So let's come to the demo. Uh, I assume a lot, of a lot of you will have questions about how we do this, how we do that. So I'm going to demonstrate, oh, sorry, these uh, uh, six stuffs. Uh, first is how do you use basic CSS attributes? Um, so you're looking at a component. Uh, React has this com concept of higher order components and this we are using a React GSS library that creates this higher level component that kind of does what I showed you using the inner HTML, but it integrates with uh, React. Um, the style definition is here. Can I change the resolution? You okay. can try that. Okay. Never mind. So the styles are here. It's cut off. Uh, you can see normal styles. I I'll explain what uh, each of these mean. Uh, I and uh, the library will create this class prop that will be injected into your component, and you can use these objects, uh, these fields, as class names. They are strings, they're generated. We are developing, they generate really meaningful names for you to uh, look at, to debug, and when you publish it, it minimize the names. Fantastic. Uh, you don't even need to use any minimize uh, solutions. All right. So the next thing is uh, setting generate classes to React class name props. Yep, it's here. Uh, it's still class, right? Uh, I know some people, CSS diehard fans, don't want to use inline styles. But rest assured, these are still CSS classes. Uh, CSS is not dead. Um, right, the third thing. How do you do some complex stuff? Um, first, uh, nesting. If you have used SAS before, you might be familiar with this concept, right? You want to have hierarchy in your classes so that you don't want to re rewrite a lot of stuff. Uh, it's supported here. It's almost the same. Uh, it's, it has the same syntax. You have the ampersand uh, plus whatever you want to add to it. Uh, and uh, the JSS library will just generate that kind of uh, uh, classes based on this hierarchy. Second, pseudo selector. I think someone just now asked me, how do you do that? How do you hover, right? You can do that. And it's not JavaScript. That's perfect. Um, just use the nested attribute plus your whatever pseudo selector you want to use. Hover, like adjacent components, right? And it, it definitely works. And uh, the third is the class name reference. So, you know, uh, to achieve this kind of, uh, you know, you want to style the adjacent. Uh, uh, classes, you use a plus, and together by referring back to your uh, class name. Of course, you can refer to other class names, but that usually doesn't make sense. Um, media query. Ah, this is important. Uh, I see a lot of people questioning how media query can be done in this method. It's just string, right? You can use string as JavaScript object names and just use string. The media query as the name of the, uh, the, the field, uh, and JSS will generate the media query for you. Uh, still the same syntax. Um, so you, your skill in CSS will be preserved. Uh, it's not deprecated or obsolete. Right, media query. OK, customizability, three minutes. Customizability with uh, special props. Right, uh, remember I talked about how you want to customize an object with the old inline style is by exposing attributes. Uh, if you ex expose the whole style uh, object, you open up the risk of uh, people meddling up with your component in a, in a way that is not intended to. Uh, so I can actually define a different variance for my object, or for my component, and use the prop to determine the uh, attributes uh, when the user of my component actually uses it. Um, oh, theming. Uh-huh. Look at this. So uh, 
you, you don't have, you kind of don't have global variables if you use these kind of uh, uh, modules, but you can achieve that by defining your theme in a single file. Um, so that's an, another question that a lot, a lot of uh, CSS diehard fans ask. How do you, uh, you know, you don't have the global thing. How do you let the uh, designers uh, design your themes just by putting those variables here? Never have uh, magic strings or magic numbers. And I think it's really easy uh, principle to follow uh, as uh, developers. Right. Um, okay. Next. Uh, Built-in customizability with a higher order component. This with styles doesn't only inject the classes into your components as some kind of internal stuff. It's actually exposed to the outside world. So that gives you, that automatically gives you the ability for your user to understand how they can customize your components without even looking at your code. Right? Just look at the props. Uh, you know, uh, you, you can have some doc generator to generate uh, uh, documents for React components. And uh, if you want to customize, for example, I want to customize the wrapper uh, attribute, I can just use uh, these uh, like uh, special uh, classes that I created for the, within the common uh, styles. Um, if, if. I want to change the uh, background color of my uh, this component. I can actually, oh, yeah, here, right. Let me do this. I shouldn't do it, but I can actually do background color with uh, what's that? Light C green, <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, it, it's not this one. <laughs> right, so uh, I actually customized uh, this component by injecting that class name into the style component uh, of a uh, component by when, when I was using it. Right, and uh, yeah, so I think uh, that's everything that I'm going to show today, and uh, it's almost time. Uh, hmm, sir? You like Beyonce, I let you go. Uh, yeah, if you have questions. So, uh, you know, there are, uh, when, when I have used a lot of solutions, and I really prefer to put the styles into the components uh, so that, you know, when you get a lot of uh, files, you don't search around your file system, uh, which can be nasty. All right. Yeah, thank you very much. Um. Hello, uh, thank you a lot for a very great sharing about GSS. Mm -hmm. uh, I have one question about um, how it works. So as you mentioned that it will uh, make the style in, la in the style tag, right? Uh, in a React style prop? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, it doesn't, it's not in a style tag. So if you look at here, uh, they are class names. If you use React before, you know class name is just a string. I see. Uh, yeah, these classes are just generated strings. Uh, yeah. uh, my, my question is that, can I extract the style into an actual CSS file or not? Uh, uh, oh, uh, I believe you can. There are a mm, lot of plugins written for this. But you need to uh, understand that uh, these uh, classes are generated at runtime. So uh, there's one solution that actually generates your CSS uh, for your server rendered components. So you can extract just, uh, the string after running your web page for once. Um, so if that's, that's what you're talking about. Um, no, I should be asking is that in front end, right, um, yeah. maybe some components where some very uh, universal uh, stylings that we would like to extract it out so that oh. server can cache it. So uh, if we right. generate, uh, we have some use case is that, uh, we also try some of this, but we realize is that uh, we, we use style component actually, but um, there are something that we would like to make it very uh, global, or not really global, but very common component and common styling. We would like to extract it in a file and we uh, put it in the link tag so that we oh. can cache it and we use it yeah. later. Of course, you can do it. So if you write it in a way that it's uh, in a file, you run it. So these, that you can actually call it create style sheet. It returns your style sheet. You can, you can save it somewhere. Thank you. 
Actually, I, I do have one question. Uh, there's another. There's another. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I think it's a pretty fast question. I, I guess um, I was just wondering whether by default GSS, the scope, was it like local or is it global? It's local. It's, it's JavaScript. I mean, the, the class names they put? Yeah. They're global. I they see. create unique names for all your uh, so local. Some kind of hash? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's how you minimize uh, your CSS. Oh, of course. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Ching, can I ask one question? Okay, yeah. so I got tasks on the front end task now. I'm building a UI library and all that stuff, and basically the system. Uh -huh. And the main thing I realized is like how uh, undisciplined, ill-disciplined we are when it comes to CSS. Mm. Are there any tricks about how you organize your code and stuff to make sure all your other fellow colleagues don't mess the system up? Yes. Yes. Putting everything in a single file. Really? Yes. <laughs> put your put it, put your classes. No, no. Put your in, put your styles inside the component that actually uses it. So other people, when they l go to your file, they know it's yours, and they don't mess it up. Best answer. I'll, I'll put in some warning stuff as well, like comments. One more time, applause, please. Woo!